All right, so I finally got my hands on a um, R7. First time seeing one in the flesh, and I'm gonna get to de-restrict this one today. Should be pretty straightforward. The only difference that I can think of will be the fairings. Um, aside from that, everything else should be pretty much the same. Now, I haven't done a run on this. I haven't actually taken it apart yet. So I'll be going through this and removing stuff as I see it, as I come across it. So if I sort of make any mistakes or <clears throat> have to backtrack or whatever, just bear with me. Um, it'd be great if I had the time, but I don't. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. So when it arrived, it was pretty filthy because it, it's been raining today. So I gave it a quick clean. Um, still a bit dirty, but bear with me. It does fit, would fit, maybe, very close. But, um, you have to make some new tabs there. Voila. Oh, that's cool. Very interesting. The screwdriver. Is that all you get? A handle on that? No Allen keys? Am I blind? Or is there no Allen keys? I'm not blind. There are no Allen keys. Yamaha, there's barely any Phillips head screws on the bike. In fact, you can't even get to the fucking... You can't even get to that with with Felix. Oh, that's hilarious. Wait, what about underneath the uh, seat cowl? No. <laughs> Let's give him a Phillips head. Sorry about that, I uh, ran out of space on my SD card, so deleted some shit and I'm good to go. Alright, let's get back into it, what's next? So I'm glad I didn't try and pull on it too hard. Some push rivets. So it boggles my mind that they're able to jig on these new uh, supports for the seat. Or... Hang on, were these actually for... Uh, so these are for the pillion pegs, sorry, my bad. Um, yet they, they couldn't be fucked removing that. Anyway. Another one there. It may or may not have to be undone, because you may be able to take the tank off. Sorry, the fairings off in one piece, but... I'll just take it off while I'm here. Yeah. 
for here. What a pain in the ass, man. It's one thing they that shit me about the MTO7s is, is these little shitty grommets that they use always pop in. And this one's just in a real dick of a place. They still haven't fixed that issue, man. Seven years and running. No more. What, 2014 to 2022? Come on. I'm pain in the ass. I mean, I definitely didn't do that because, you know, I was pulling out, so. <laughs> if. Oh, sugar. It's going all the way down. Fuck you, Yamaha. Fuck you. Oh, look at that small battery. It's way smaller. <sighs> okay. I'll come back to that later. And then the one holding the tank on is a pair of fives. This side. Oh, hang on. So this one was a push pin. The other one was a Phillips. Okay. separate voila oh, I love figuring shit out it's so fun just hang this up like like the piece of pig when the butchers very graceful Next up, we've got four bolts, hex heads, size 10, some pretty heavy duty. And that just comes off, no problem. Take the fuel breather hose. Hoses. 
plural. It's a new clip, new design, it's interesting. I find it interesting how these periodically update things. Yeah, that's completely new. What was wrong with the old one, I wonder? Um, this is new as well, the sheath that goes over it. Why was that not introduced for the MT-07? Why does the R7 get it? Why, why now? Why after so long? I mean, wouldn't that have just been a no-brainer from the beginning? Why has it taken eight years? Uh, Yamaha would save so much money using push rivets instead of um, bolts, screws and stuff because they're so much cheaper. Nope. Uh, actually, you know, it'll be interesting to see if my um, cheap little chinkita is going to work. Chinkita is what I call it because it's a Chinese Makita. Uh, this thing owes me what, roughly, how much did I pay for it? I think it was like 36 bucks or something like that. And then I got a refund of 20 bucks, give or take, because it was a little bit broken and didn't work properly. Yeah. Well, at least it's, it's stronger than the um, impact driver. It's not even up but chin is close. Alright, so once you find an appropriate sized something or other thing we jig to prop the stand up with and then may remove the connection here fuel sensor so let's just push down the clip and then pull once you hit the click you're good to go as for the fuel line well, so you can see just push down on the sides there and then pull with your other free hand. Hopefully you guys can see that. Just squeeze down, pull, off it comes. I love these tools. So it's gonna have plenty to drain out. I think it's a full tank. Yeah, it's full tank. Luckily it doesn't really matter because these tanks are so small. It weighs fuck all anyway. Alright, let's remove the tank. Tank removal in three, two, one. Give it. the filter check the breather hose off dough Good one. Hit my camera and leak the fuel. Today's not my day. So let me tell you why I'm saying that. So the first thing that went wrong is this gash here. So 
I'm, I'm doing my own DIY um, insulation panels at the moment in this garage because you know, it gets really fucking cold or really fucking hot. There's really no middle ground in this joint. Um, and because basically it's just a tin roof and there's many gaps in the sides of the walls and the, the ceiling. Like when I got here, like I could actually just reach outside. I could put my hand outside the garage for the roof. That's how big some of the gaps in the corners were. So I'm making these insulation panels. I've done the door as well. Basically just a false ceiling using cardboard and tin foil with a lot of tape. And yeah, I staple them to the roof and up along the top of the ridge here, um, you can sort of see up here, there's quite a big gap there where they didn't finish bricking it. And I had a whole bunch of bricks spare, so I, I decided to actually stack that extra row up full of bricks. Just, I don't know, seems like it might not be a bad idea when it comes to insulation and blocking shit. And I was redoing this section because water had gotten in and it started to get moldy and stunk. So I was redoing it. So I put up a, a brick again after I was finished. I looked at the brick, made sure it was stable. Right, it's all good to go. I'll start climbing back down the ladder. Get to the bottom ladder. My arm's still resting on, on top of the, the top part of the ladder. And I'm just going to hear a little, like, you know, I think, what's that? And then next thing I know, the brick just lands straight on my, my wrist. And that's, well, from all the way up there onto here. And my hand was against the actual ladder like that. So it went crush. It fell down and smashed all over the ground. That was fun. Um, that was roughly about 20 seconds before this guy actually called me to say, hey, I'm here. So I had to put on on my game face, you know, like, like that didn't hurt. <sighs> hurt like hell. So that, that was the first, you know, bit of fuckery I had today. Second one, well, it was a doozy. So I wanted to install um, these lights that I had sitting around because it's a little bit dim over in the area where I do my electronics and stuff. So I had that uh, T5 office light sitting around. I know it's crooked, but I was literally in a mad rush and I just wanted to get it up there. Um, and so I put the first screw in and as I was just sort of adjusting it to line it up and just about ready to put the second screw in, it gives away. The screw came out from the wood, so uh, I guess I drilled into a shitty spot, but hard to tell because the insulation. That then dropped onto my head, which then proceeded to break the, um, the fluoro tube, which exploded on my head. That sent shards of fluorescent tube everywhere. That means down my neck, down my back, all over my hands, my hat. My hat got fucked up too. <laughs> it actually ripped out some of the threads where it hit. There was actually a, a bit of glass lodged into that. Um, lucky I had my hat on, because that would have fucking, I would have been pissing blood otherwise. And left all these stains here on my hat. I mean, I'll try cleaning this off, but yeah. I need to go for a wash now. But yeah, it fucked up my threads. Um, and yeah, the grass went everywhere. Like fucking, found it all on the bench, found it over here, found it on this bench, that bench, found it over there, near the door, fucking over near the TV over there, behind the bikes, uh, all throughout my clothes. And I'm trying to work on this and I keep feeling all these little cuts in my hands, like little, little slices here and there when I grab something and I feel like a bit of glass is digging in. Same for my back, you know, if I moved a little bit, I felt something kind of slicing me. So that, that was a bit of a head fuck. That yeah, was interesting. And then and to top it off, you know, I'm like, well, at least I got the light. Um, yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> so now it's not working. So that, that was, that was definitely worthwhile doing. A very good improvement. <clears throat> Wasn't a waste of time at all. If anyone knows why that's happening, I mean, at our best guess, maybe the ballast needs all four to be working in series. And it's firing up, but then when it's not getting the correct you know, resistance or load, whatever, it's then shutting off. That's my best guess. I don't have a spare T5 tube to test that theory out. And it's my first time dealing with one of those things. So yeah, I don't really know much about them. I'd love to convert it to lead. I looked into some of the prices, but fuck that deal. Like, 50 bucks for a set of four lead globes and they're small ones anyway uh, some other shit happened too that sort of set it all off but um yeah today's not my day the owners told me that his mate said he can remove the throttle plate no problem 
except he fucked up both the screws. So he didn't stop at just one, he, he fucked them both. I'm not sure why people insist on fucking them both. Once you fuck one of them, like, you're better off just trying to get rid of that, get the first one off, right? Why are you still trying to take off another good one when you've already just fucked one of them? I mean, you're gonna have to come back to the fuck one eventually, right? Finish fucking the first one and then try and fuck the second one later. Don't just fuck them both and give up. Right. So, these two are just down there. There's only one from the other side. Um, and then there's a total of five from this side. But I'm going to have to take this little side panel off. So I can't access it without scratching shit otherwise. The old Mendel way. Oof, that's frustrating. It's orientated in a way that I can't fucking like, get the Allen key on there. Oh, I can, but I can't do anything with it. How frustrating. Mmm. One more. Mark. Okay, now, I'm gonna be stubborn. I don't wanna take that off. So, let's think of some creative ways we can get in there. I could use a small Allen key. like so and then use the power of leverage There we go. Voila. It's located up in there. Same deal again. Just gonna wanna slide that locking clip. And in this case, if you're looking down on the bike, you want to sort of pull it up this way. There we go, see, these are the clips you want to push down in on. And then just pull. Make sure it's unlocked, then pull. Ugh, it's gushing. And I always try and pull it up through this way so um, it doesn't go on the plastics or the fairings. This is the um, fuel tank sender. Just want to tuck that away. The breather we will tuck away. Doesn't matter if you kink it, it's fine because it's gonna stay there forever. Then we're going to undo the injector connectors. Number one, number two. Just push down on them and pull. Once you hear the click, you're good to go. Usually, sometimes, sometimes, they want to be little cunts. And they just need a little bit of persuasion. There we go. And then we've got the ISCV. This one's quite difficult to push down onto. Bit of a narrow kind of clip and just requires a lot of force. Once it does click, you can easily just pull back on it and I think that's the noise it makes. Once you hear that, you're good to go. So just want to feed the three connectors out. Uh, yeah, normally I would run them down behind the block there, but with this plastic fearing in the way, I might just back it out for here. Don't 
scratch anything and we're good. Bring the breather lines out over here. Is that the auxiliary? Oh, what was that? The fuck was that? You all heard that, what was it? So we want to remove these cables completely. So next you want to want to remove the connector for the throttle position sensor. It's getting a bit tricky. Got it. All right, so the battery died and while off camera, I disconnected the uh, the connector for the TPS. Um, all I've got left to do now is the vacuum hose to the throttle bodies and the breather lines for the fuel. But before I do that, before I forget, I'm just going to quickly tape up the sides of this airbox. And the reason I do that is just to prevent any scratches because sometimes when you're not looking, you know, you're trying to get one side out. The other side, unbeknownst at the time, could be rubbing on the frame or whatever. And because it's not my bike, I'd like to avoid that. It's cheap insurance. I've taken gloves off because my hands are sweating and shit. Next, we're going to take off the vacuum line. Just give it a wiggle. pops off, tuck it in behind there. <coughs> now that the, um, the box is taped up, we're ready to remove the throttle body. Pull the cables out of the way. Now to get them out, you just want to sort of jiggle and jaggle zig and zag until they come out it helps to push down on the box to get as much room as possible this is a new challenge that i haven't experienced before because there's fairings in the way um this might have to come off yeah bummer That's no big deal. Let's have a four Allen. However, it is linked up to the engine mount. See if the Chinkita can do it. Makita. My $16 Makita from China. Chinkita. Actually, it's, I wouldn't say it's good, but it's, it's better than the Impact. That's the job. Yeah, it actually has the slot for Impact as well, which is cool. So it's basically like the Impact on steroids, but definitely not a regular, genuine torque wrench. Yeah. Uh, impact wrench, sorry. So it's one. No power tools for this one. <clears throat> Fuck! I'm surprised the actual Jinkita got that off. I can move the bike with this. The whole bike's moving. Fuck. That's well impressive that I've done that. Cheetah pipes on. Hmm. 
I'll come back. Okay, we've got the bracket out of the way. Let's continue removing the throttle bodies. Goes about 15 bucks with petrol based off today's prices, you know, a few drops. And the airbox just comes out like so. However, do not forget the fuel tank breathers. Chinkhead almost took a fall. I don't know if it's alive. Now I can actually access that a bit better. This is laughing at Makita. Just laughing at it. Why are they doing this up so fucking tight? It's just to hold the breather lines. It's not holding the engine. Get fucked. Get a torque wrench for this. Good old Chinkita. Gets him every time. Oh, except for the times, it really matters. All right, now that the breather lines are disconnected, just trying to get the airbox out. Just be careful not to scratch. Cool. And this is what we're removing. All right, so these screws are already being attempted on, so it's gonna be quite difficult, but let's see if we can have a crack at them now this is a Japanese style bit these aren't actually Phillips head which is why most people when they try with Phillips head are only successful so use the Japanese style and you should be able to get it first time with an impact every single time we'll try the less least fucked one which is slightly less fucked this one on three Yeah, I'm better than I thought. This one's going to be the challenge. <sighs> Fucking know it. It's too far gone. Did I just tighten the screw? <laughs> I think I just tightened the screw. Oh, uh, tighten the screws. Yeah, I saw the screw move. Oh yeah, it absolutely would be. They use like, like a clear or something. You can see it, there's a slight coloration. Oh yeah, 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 there. It's a fair amount. Mm. It's super strong. It is. Well, actually it's not even that strong to be honest. It's just it's the screws just, are so it's shit. The screws, yep. They're so shit and they're, they're J-style. Anyway, fuck the extractors, they're worthless. All you need is a good quality drill. Right. Uh, so I found um, 
Well, I didn't find it, but anyway, it's been found. That's the thing that made that ching ching noise that I was tripping out on. I suspect it. Was. All right, so it's time to now trimmel out the restrictions. This is how I do it. You can choose to do it any other way you want, as long as the results the same. There you have it. Smooth as silk and it still retains the lip to seat onto the throttle body. Tissues did a good job. Is there a reason? Well, we'll never know. Because it's not like GoPros are going to go, I hear you, know, actually, we, we don't know how to make this software, sorry, um, but we're going to charge you like we do, and we're not going to support you either, so go fuck yourself, and if you don't like it, well, go buy something else, ha <laughs> they say that because there's nothing else, I mean, the only GoPro that ever really kind of worked properly was like GoPro 1, yeah, and GoPro 2, GoPro 3 was good. Yeah, GoPro 3 worked really well. Um, GoPro 4, I think, was probably one of the best that came out. Um, compared to what's available now, like it's a piece of shit, but it was reliable. It was like, oh, old faithful, you know, like small, plus it had the fucking um, micro C, uh, micro USB port for the speak, uh, for the microphone. You know, I, for a dollar fifty, I had a a microphone and an adapter that worked with it. Dollar fifty. No. Moving on to the five. Now we're gonna we're gonna make it proprietary software now. You need to have that little handshake happening with the cable. And this big ass fucking stupid adapter that is bigger than the camera. Just so you can have a microphone. And then we're gonna price it at like a hundred bucks. Why? Fuck you, that's why. Because we can. You can't. Fuck you. Don't like it? Go buy something else. <laughs> but you can't. I've had nothing but problems with this camera since day one. I mean, literally the first time I used it, it overheated. Just for day one. Straight out of the box, just fucking overheated within like 10 minutes. While on the bike, getting air. I like beep, 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 beep. I touch it, I'm like, oh, fuck. Hot. Sometimes it looks like I know what I'm doing. Reality is I have no fucking idea what's going on right now. None. God, and where, so where am I? What the fuck am I doing here? I have winged this entire operation. Speed foam. It does help aid water from getting in there as well. Uh, that is to make it even. Even? Because like, this one does help. 
It doesn't have a gap like that, so I do. It had it on both sides, yeah. No, it didn't. Didn't it? No. It's only ever on that off. side. No. It's shape. No, it's only ever on that side. No. I've never seen it on this side before, so it hit the rear and there. And it's to stop dust mainly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's such a fucking feeble attempt at it. It was like Yeah, I know. It's like trying to put like a, a screen door on a submarine. Yeah, like not it's a nice thought, no, but really you're all gonna drown and die. Because it's a it's a screen door on a submarine, you fucking moron. Doesn't work. Door needs to be solid. So I mean you can if you look down there's a massive gap. Yeah, just else. where it ends, you know, would it have killed them to make that a little bit longer to block the rest of that big gaping fucking hole? And does it really matter anyway if you block that hole when you've got like another one there, 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 all throughout the fucking boot? Like, none of this shit is actually lined, like, yeah. completely covered. Like, the, the MTO7, you can see the ground <laughs> through the bike, <laughs> like, the whole back end is completely. Like just aired out. The first time I went for a ride, like through the mud, like on a rainy day and shit. Oh man, I, why was I cleaning the shit out of that bike for fucking so long on the inside? It was when I went to Tasmania. Yeah. And we went down dirt roads and shit to get back to the ferry. When it was raining, went through all the high country, like the logging roads and shit. And yeah, the bike was just co like covered in mud. Lucky I put all my shit like wrapped in like um, like uh, those glad wrap bags and shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cause yeah, my whole boot was like yellow from mud. Not exactly entirely Yamaha's fault. It was partly partly because of their actually no fuck them. It is all entirely their fault because it was their get tail tidy that I was using. So yeah, fuck them. I see you too have a big gaping hole where your tail tidy is. Yeah. Bit a bit overkill there for that single wire. Mm -hmm. Get onto it one there. Yeah. 3D printer, Got a little there. bit of dirt coming in through there, just a bit. Not much, just a. It's a tad. Yeah, yeah, a, a pinch, just a pinch. And then last thing is just the seat. Should be able to figure this shit out. It's actually annoying to put on. You got to turn the key while you do it. Ha. Huh. That'd be right. What are they for? Anything? No, 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 it's been like that all the time. It's weird. That's strange, isn't I it? I thought there was push bins too. When I took Maybe them. they just moulded it uh, for a different bike like that. It has connected yeah, no. And they've just shared the part. Oof, those hooks are pretty fucking dead Impressive. little <laughs> Damn. Man, someone fucking road rages, you just take your seat off and fucking... <laughs> duh, cunt, duh, 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 and just pick them up by the fucking... That is hectic. I've never seen them that sharp before in my life. Oh man, your keys, this keyhole is going to get absolutely fucking right. trashed. Yeah, I'll, I'll... Give it a bit of time and it's going to go... Oh, it we'll won't want to open any time. Why is it open like that? I might 3D plug a hole. Print. Oh, a crunch. A grommet. Crunch. Yum. Crunch. That is such a... Um, very... Mm, simplistic. Design. Very simplistic. I mean, that is just uh, how much more simple can it get? <laughs> wow. And are the claws necessary? Someone's taking the piss at Yamaha. I, think it was, I, feel, I feel like it was designed by a fucking child. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'll get it. It's just weird. Wireless turning the key. Is that absolutely necessary? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Oh, you mean that goes yeah, in first? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you said you, you, you did that. No, it doesn't. It's not like that. It's like. No, actually, it's like this, and then that way. It's in, then back. You gotta zig, then you zag. Look, so this is a zig, and then this is your zag. And you, you made it sound much worse than it actually is. <laughs> really, it's this. Oh, when I was trying to figure it out for the first time. What do you mean? Like, you the ninja, you just click it down, you're done. Yeah, no, but this is just push it in, and then like. Yeah, 
Ja, in der. I wonder if you can just push harder. No. No. Yeah. I am cheating there, but... If you just turn the key, if you get enough gravel and pebbles and stuff yeah, inside that key... Yeah, exactly. It just stays half cocked. Look at that. Watch. Haha. -ha. And doesn't open again. Thank you, Gravel. Thank you, Gravel. Environment wins.